Philip Jeffries is another subject in Twin Peaks that exists on the blurred line between our reality and the next. Like the Owl Cave Ring, he first appears in Fire Walk With Me and is not featured in the original television series. Though his screen time is incredibly short, the mystique surrounding this character has made him a fan favorite. The fact that his first incarnation is played by legendary rock icon David Bowie certainly helps as well. Jeffries is a special agent of the FBI who unexplainably went missing while on assignment in South America and returns as an apparition at the FBI offices in Philadelphia in 1989. After a disjointed and confusing explanation of his absence, Jeffries vanishes, never to be seen again in human form. 25 years later, he is represented as an intangible energy inhabiting a machine. And in the finale of The Return, Jeffries assists Dale Cooper with the power of time travel, sending Cooper back in time to save Laura Palmer from her murder. What's most intriguing is that almost everything about this character is ambiguous or contradicted at some point, as there are, in fact, multiple versions of his appearances throughout the narrative. This episode will attempt to unpack the Jeffries character while discussing the roles of memory, revisionism, and infinity in Twin Peaks. In the on-screen chronology of Twin Peaks, Philip Jeffries is one of the first characters we encounter. He is seen toward the beginning of the Fire Walk With Me prequel, introducing the idea of Judy and giving the audience a first glimpse of the convenience store. He's also one of the last characters we meet, appearing toward the end of The Return, taking us physically inside the convenience store for the first time, with the concept of Judy being more fully formed. According to the secret history in the final dossier novels, Jeffries is an only child from an old aristocratic Virginian family who graduated top of his class with Gordon Cole at Quantico in 1968. He is a founding member of the Blue Rose Task Force and disappeared while on assignment in Buenos Aires, Argentina in 1987. It's 10.10 a.m. on February 16th. A week before the murder of Laura Palmer in 1989, Jeffries appears in Philadelphia and encounters Gordon Cole, Dale Cooper, and Albert Rosenfield who question his whereabouts. He appears in stark contrast to the other FBI men, visually represented as different or changed, wearing a white suit with ruby red shoes. His first words are the now famous, I'm not going to talk about Judy, and then points to Cooper shouting, Who do you think that is there? He goes on to mention a ring, a meeting above a convenience store, and another now famous line, We live inside a dream. This sequence in Fire Walk With Me cuts in and out of static with flashes of his convenience store vision before he disappears. The missing pieces of Fire Walk With Me shows the sequence in full. Jeffries in Buenos Aires, the uncut convenience store scene, and his vanishing and horrified return to Argentina. The uncut version also features Jeffries' shock at the realization of the date. 1989. Our first hints at the idea of time jumping. Jeffries is not seen for 25 years until the latter parts of the return, taking a new form inside a machine. He is, however, referenced throughout the story and is first associated with Cooper's doppelganger, Mr. C. I'm looking for Philip Jeffries. At first mention, Jeffrey's character is immediately shrouded in mystery and ambiguity. Mr. C discovers that his hired hands, Ray and Daria, intend to double-cross him and may be working with Jeffries to do so. I got another call from Jeffries. Mr. C also receives a radio transmission from who he believes to be Jeffries, though it's strongly suggested that it's an imposter. This is Philip Jeffries, right? Mr. C is surprised by these revelations and now assumes that someone or something is out to get him, which may include Jeffries, who, context suggests, he thought to be an ally. This is quite an interesting thing to think about. His pursuit of Ray lands Mr. C in Yankton Federal Prison, and during his interrogation by Gordon Cole, he explains that he has been working with Jeffries over many years. Philip Jeffries? Albert Rosenfield later reveals to Gordon that he was contacted by Jeffries years ago regarding the missing Dale Cooper. I told Philip who our man was in Columbia. A week later, that man was killed. This information also points to the idea that Jeffries and Mr. C may be working together to Gordon's dismay. Cooper, Philip, what the hell? Mr. C blackmails his way out of prison, only to be duped by Ray, who shoots him and flees the scene. We then see Ray leaving a message for who he believes to be Jeffries. Philip, I think he's dead. Mr. C catches up with Ray at the farm, and Ray confesses that he is working for Jeffries, who is at the Dutchman's Lodge. At the Dutchman's, via the convenience store, Mr. C confronts his new incarnation. Why did you send Ray to kill me? I called Ray. Did you call me five days ago? I don't have your number. 
This confirms to Mr. C that Ray and Jeffries have been working together, but that someone else may be trying to kill him as well. He recalls their meeting back in 1989 in Philadelphia and starts grilling Jeffries about Judy. Who is Judy? Jeffries produces coordinates, but then ejects Mr. C from the Dutchman's when pressed about it. In discussions with Albert Rosenfield and Tammy Preston, Gordon Cole also remembers the Philadelphia encounter in his Monica Bellucci dream, something that he seems to have forgotten. Who do you think that is there? Albert also has trouble remembering this incident, as though his memory has faded too. Gordon later explains that Jeffries doesn't really exist anymore, but that Jeffries was onto the entity known as Judy, and that Ray Monroe is actually an FBI informant. The final dossier novel reaffirms that Jeffries was pursuing a character named Judy, or Zhao Day, while in South America, and that Ray Monroe was recruited by the Blue Rose Task Force almost two years prior to work on the missing Cooper case, believing that he was working for Jeffries. These revelations strongly suggest that Jeffries is somewhat of a double agent and has been working, at least tangentially, with Gordon for a long time after all. Now this is really something interesting to think about. Finally, we see the real Dale Cooper led by Mike through the convenience store into the Dutchman's Lodge. Jeffries seems to be anticipating Cooper. Please, be specific. Which again suggests that he is part of some larger plan involving Cooper, Gordon Cole, and possibly the fireman. Cooper requests the date of February 23rd, 1989, and Jeffries continues with words that are as enigmatic as his words 25 years earlier. There may be someone. Did you ask me this? Then in a surge of electricity, Jeffrey sends Cooper back in time to complete the mission of saving Laura Palmer. The different incarnations of the Twin Peaks universe and the nature of the story have led to several inconsistencies and revisions. These revisions are sometimes the byproduct of early television serial writing, and sometimes on purpose as blatantly seen in the Mark Frost books and with the introduction of alternate timelines in The Return. The arc of Philip Jeffries is a classic example of this. The 1992 release of Fire Walk With Me puts the Jeffries appearance in Philadelphia in 1988, around the same time of Teresa Banks' murder and the disappearance of Special Agent Chet Desmond with the Laura Palmer murder taking place a year later. In 2014, The Missing Pieces was released featuring the uncut Philadelphia scene, which includes Jeffrey's realization that is in fact 1989, putting his appearance just before the murder of Laura Palmer. The subsequent release of the Mark Frost books and the 2017 Showtime series also placed this event in 1989, thus, for lack of a better term, making February 1989 the official version of his appearance date. And with the release of The Return, another iteration was added, leaving us with three different versions of that scene. The version in the original cut of Fire Walk With Me, with David Bowie, taking place in 1988. Who do you think this is there? The version in The Missing Pieces, taking place in 1989, with an alternate take of David Bowie. Who do you think that is there? And the versions in The Return recalled his memories in black and white, with Bowie's voice overdubbed by voice actor Nathan Frizzell. Who do you think that is there? These different versions in the final scenes with Jeffries only compound the mysterious nature of his character and motivations. We remember that he is associated with Mr. C at the beginning of The Return, and by the end, evidence suggests that he has been working to help Cooper and Gordon. But his final scenes and dialogue with Mr. C and Cooper leave both the protagonist and the audience confused. For example, he doesn't answer answer Mr. C when asked about Judy and who called him, but volunteers to Dale Cooper, This is where you'll find Judy. There may be someone. Did you ask me this? Because the story of Twin Peaks is put in a constant state of revision by the creators, we can maybe indulge ourselves a little and try to make more sense of these scenes with a revision of our own. It seems like it would make more sense for the Mr. C interaction to play out like this. Did you call me five days ago? I don't have your number. So it was someone else who called me. There may be someone. Philip, who is Judy? Does Judy want something from me? Why don't you ask Judy yourself? Let me write it down for you. This is where you'll find 
Perhaps his time jumping and altered existence damaged his mind in some way, or maybe poor Jeffries has just become forgetful too. We can only conclude the obvious. Jeffries is not all there, literally and figuratively. It's slippery in here. Jeffries also says to Cooper, Say hello to Gordon if you see him. He'll remember the unofficial version. In context of the plot, we could assume that Jeffries is referring to Cooper changing the past by rescuing Laura Palmer, thus creating a new timeline, meaning a new official version or official story in which Laura was never killed, and that Gordon will be one of the few that will remember the now unofficial version in which Laura was actually murdered, which started the Twin Peaks story to begin with. But it's interesting to speculate that this could also be a little nod to David Lynch in his original cut of Fire Walk With Me, with the Bowie Jeffries appearing in 1988, now being the unofficial version after the return and novel rewrites. This could also tie into the fourth wall breaking Monica Bellucci dream of Gordon Cole, played by Lynch, which triggers his memory of Jeffries in the first place. While the concept of complete circles is pervasive throughout Twin Peaks, The Return introduces us to the idea of infinity through Philip Jeffries and his power of time travel. As Jeffries prepares to send Cooper back in time, he generates the Owl Cave petroglyph, what's become sort of an avatar for Twin Peaks, that morphs into what can be seen as the number 8, or the symbol for infinity. The story then becomes more than a complete cycle, it becomes a Mobius strip with an infinite number of starting and ending points. Non-linear elements of Twin Peaks are not necessarily new. The waiting room, the lodges, the mob zone, the convenience store, and the Dutchman's all exist on another plane where time and space are seemingly irrelevant. But the Cooper and Jeffries encounter and the introduction of new timelines at the end of the return, while providing soft cover for inconsistencies and rewrites throughout, opens up the real-world narrative to an infinite number of possibilities. The final dossier also suggests that the creation of the new timeline in which Laura disappears affects the memories of the townspeople, who now remember that she had gone missing 25 years earlier as opposed to being murdered, or have difficulty recalling Laura Palmer at all. This phenomenon is similar to how Gordon and Albert have trouble recollecting their memories of Jeffries, which leads us to wonder if Jeffries' appearance exists in another timeline as well. And it's worth mentioning that the idealization and inconsistent nature of memory also fits into the return's critique of nostalgia. We live inside a dream. As the Jeffries character in Time Jumping bookend the linear story of Twin Peaks, it's worth pointing out some parallels with the main character through line of Dale Cooper. Obviously, both are special agents of the FBI and members of the Blue Rose Task Force who disappear without a trace. Cooper calling out to Gordon as the lights go out toward the end of the return Gordon? is reminiscent of the uncut Jeffrey scene in The Missing Pieces Gordon? when Cooper yells to Gordon shortly before the lights start to flicker out. When Fire Walk With Me was released in 1992, it was speculated by some that Jeffries was investigating Judy, possibly a dead woman, like Chet Desmond and Teresa Banks, and Dale Cooper and Laura Palmer. Years later in the Missing Pieces release, we saw Jeffries in Buenos Aires and we hear that Miss Judy is alive, so it could have been more like Cooper's relationship with Annie Blackburn, someone he was chasing after that ultimately led him to the other side. With the return in the final dossier, the story shifts and we now know that Jeffries is after Zhao Day, the mother of all evil, the same entity that arguably Cooper and the firemen are pursuing as well. Perhaps the Jeffries character is helping the audience understand the state of Dale Cooper at the end of the return. Maybe Jeffries was the Cooper of a different story, a pawn in some larger game, or a failed protagonist whose quest has left him in a state of broken and forgetful energy. With the introduction of an infinite number of possible outcomes, the case of Philip Jeffries becomes a perfect metaphor for the story as a whole. A beginning, an end, an open-ended, a specter, a memory, and a dream. We live inside a dream.